Hello and welcome to Kitter Farms. We're back with another episode of UMRV Upper Mississippi River Valley and today we're going to be attempting to see if we can automate the raking and pickup of all of the hay we've got out in the field here. I've got the 7810 hooked up today primarily because that's the tractor that I've got a available right now. Everything else is hooked up on something somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and just... Uh, get this all set up real quick like and we're going to generate a course we've got one tool we're going to do two headland passes and start on the headlands because i am going to come right behind with the uh forage harvester here and see if we can pick all this stuff up let's see what kind of a course this generates that is a lot of little lines but i think it's because i've got two different courses on the field right now i have to figure out what uh, other vehicle we've got on there? Let me see here. I think it's this one. Let me think. Yeah, I don't. I can't think of another reason why I'd need the Swather course. I'm gonna turn that course off, and let's pop this back up and take a look. That's a lot of very little lines here. I thought this rake would be a bit wider. Let me just take another look here at the generator. It thinks it's a 4.6 foot working width. That can't be right. Let's open it up here and see if it detects a bit wider of a tool. It does not. Hmm. It's always fun when something like this uh, doesn't quite work right. And it is a official Giants DLC piece of equipment. So I'd expect it to work, but uh, unfortunately no. So let's see here. We've got 8.5 meter working width. And uh, that's going to be a, a whopping 27.88, 20, whoa, we got a long way to go here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's 27.8871, so we're going to go with 27.9 and see how this works out. Uh, generate course. There we go. Oh, that's looking a lot more like the course that I expected to see generated here. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a shot and see what happens. A little circle around here. Now, I could have taken the duels off of this tractor, I suppose, but it is what it is. We had them on. I figured we'd leave them on and see how it does. And let's see if this thing is set to the right width now that we're going. It looks pretty good. We're going to clip this wagon, maybe. Uh, nope, we made it. All right, well, we seem to be uh, moving and grooving here on this course. So let me go ahead now and I was looking to see if there's a way for me to copy this course so that I can get the other guy set up on it. Um, let me get on the straightaway here and I'll pause our uh, driver. There we go. Copy course back up just a smidge to make sure I don't miss any bits and nearest waypoint go there we go okay this guy's going now we're gonna copy that same course over here to the uh, whatchamacallit the forage harvester here and I'm gonna go ahead and get him right on to the starting point and in theory, when I turn him on, he's going to get ready to go, put everything down, and wait until we get a wagon over here next to him. Now, in hindsight, I suppose I could have got this all set up uh, ahead of time so we were ready to go, but I've been uh, running all over the place, so we're going to go ahead and use the 4440 to pull these uh, forage boxes here, and I don't remember if these are hooked together still or not. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up to this, and you know what? They are still hooked together. I don't know that this is overly realistic, but I'm going to try and pull both of these with my 4440 here and see how it goes. We've got that uh, rake coming up fast behind us, though, so I've got to get moving, get into position here, and see if we can get this uh, forage box going, or the forage harvester, I should say. It's going to turn right on into this row. There we go. And let's go. Wow, he's uh, harvesting quite quickly. I was not expecting that. And I'm having issues. Oh, it's detecting the rear 
box. Okay. We're going to drop that second box off and see what happens. It's probably going to be in the way of the, uh, what do you call it? The other machine, though. So I'm just barely keeping up here in sixth gear. I think I'm going to have to go up to seventh gear to get the speed I need to keep up here. And I'm noticing this forage harvester is missing bits here uh, a little bit more than I'm comfortable with. I was kind of expecting it to do a better job. The rake is very impatient uh, going behind me here. Kind of giving me a nudge from time to time. And I am almost half full, a little over half full here. Craziness. I think once I get off of the headland passes, the forge harvester is going to do a lot better job, but man, are we missing a lot. I'm going to have to come back around and pick this up by hand with the forge harvester, I think, because this is just a mess. And let me go ahead. I'm going to pull up ahead here for a second block the forage harvester and let that rake go by because that rake is just uh, being a bit obnoxious. There we go. We got it all sorted out. In future runs, I think it would have made more sense to run the forage harvester myself on the headland passes where all the curves are. And then I probably could have uh, switched over here to doing what we're doing now after we got to the straight rows. That's all right. We'll uh, we'll just come back and clean it up at the end. We're doing all right. We've almost got the first uh, forage box full here, which is great. As soon as it is full, like it is now, I'm going to go ahead and run this up to uh, the yard here. And oh my gosh, our forage box, our other forage box. Looks like it got taken for a ride, probably by the uh, rake here. So I'm going to just put this up in the yard here. I want to get that uh, chopper all the way around, I think, before we uh, forget about him, just to get the headland passes off. Now, I could go and start dumping this right away, but I don't know for what reason, but I'd really like to get that headland pass all knocked out here while I'm thinking about it. I don't want to just leave the forage harvester running down by the water there all this time. So I'll grab this forage box. Shouldn't be too big of a deal now that the <laughs> rake helped straighten it out for us. And... I think we'll be able to make most of the rest of the headland pass here with this box because the next pass will be a little bit shorter. Right, I'll see if I can sneak right on in here. There we go. And he's already off to the races. Good times. And I just can't believe how fast these things are filling up. I mean, we're already at 16% and we just barely went around the curb there. The curbs are always where we seem to lose out on a lot of product here. Left a lot of grass around uh, that curb. And man, I'm struggling to get up this hill. I was in eighth gear. I forgot to shift back down. All right, let's see it. We're going to get right back into the next headland pass. It looks like the rake is already moving on the longer up and down rows here the straighter up and down rows I should say good deal I think if I can take the headland pass off here just to get it out of the way so it's not causing problems when the rake is turning around it will be in a good spot uh, but I am noticing we're getting full real fast here so it might be that uh, we have to leave the forage harvester up here in the corner as long as it's not right on the headland where the rake is trying to go, I think we'll be all right. Although the rake seems to have uh, gotten itself stuck on a tree. <coughs> Luckily, with the current version of course play, fixing stuck workers is a lot easier than it used to be because you can turn on this mode where you can see where it was trying to go. 
and get it lined up with the next appropriate uh, waypoint. So if I just get swung right back in here and hit play on nearest waypoint, it's going to just start doing what it was doing and get back to the up-down rows. Shouldn't have any more problems now that we're away from that little cusp of trees, I don't think. And so we'll jump right back over here into the 4440 and try to keep this moving. Uh, I can now most likely get an auto drive worker going on running the uh, forage boxes here now. However, I just didn't feel like messing with it, to be honest, uh, today. I think we've got a point out in this field even, which would work perfectly for uh, telling the driver to come out here and run the forage harvester. Or, I'm uh, sorry, run the forage box out to the forage harvester. Um, but maybe we'll try it after we unload here. I'll see if I can set that up and see how it works, see how it runs. We're at a 100% now. I'm going to try and make it up this hill before I shift up into 8th gear. Oh man, it looks like a course play is just having a uh, rough time turning around with this rake for some reason. I don't know how in the world it got pointed over there at the barn trying to turn back in on the row over here. What is going on? Well, I kind of need that rake to do its thing, so let me hop in here and see if we can figure this out. Yeah, it looks like it tried to turn right to go left. Interesting choice. Uh, well, we'll get it going here, and hopefully this time will be the time that it decides to work all right. Third time's the charm and all that. And oh, this guy needs to giddy up and go all the way up here to the harvest store. We'll get some hay put in there. We are starting to run quite low on our animal feed. I think we've only got two days of feed left for all of our animals and we are expecting uh, more to be born in the next couple of months here. So I do have to kind of uh, keep an eye on things. Here we are, start unloading the hay. We've got quite a bit of it though, so this is gonna take just a minute. While that's going, let's see what we can do to find the right mode here. Uh, unload combine, we're gonna take this back up to the harvestor dump. And the point that we want is out in the farm hay field. While that's unloading, I can come out here and set this to farm hayfield, which it is. And yeah, that should uh, work out very well for us. All right, I've got this all emptied out. I did uh, bring this other one up here to get emptied out with the uh, pickup truck. But before I do that, I think I want to just try this out and see if this driver is going to be able to come out here and unload on the go. Uh, just because uh, that's going to be real interesting if we can fully automate this now. That was part of the goal with uh, course play and auto drive and all of the work we've been doing to convert these over to fields. And so I figured, eh, why don't we just give it a shot? It's not that hard. Uh, I, I could be running all this manually. In fact, we may even take back over and uh, do the rest of it manually after we uh, verify that this is working. But it's, uh, it's kind of fun to play around with at times. Looks like we've identified the combine. I'm really hoping we're not going to try and go right through the trees here, though. That would be unfortunate, but uh, maybe not atypical. Oh, we are going to go around. Oh, thank you so much. And here we go. We're going to line on up here and hopefully get going on the first try or not where are you going are we gonna unload on the other side fascinating oh well it seems to be working
Well, while this guy uh, does its thing and the uh, workers continue through, we're going to hop out for a minute and see if we can run up here and check on the rake. I think it's getting closer to done. Where did it go? Is it over here now? It, it does look like we're making a fair amount of progress. If I'm fast, I think I can jump in here without getting run over. Yeah, we're doing good. We're just coming up here on the uh, island here. I wish I could adjust the visibility of the course without uh, having to pause the worker. That's uh, one minor frustration I've got, is I have to pause the course in, able to, in order to uh, change these settings. Seems a little bit silly that, that button wouldn't be uh, available here for me. Either way, it looks like it is going to circle the island without any problems, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. Oh yeah, we got this. Looking good. Oh, it's actually going to take the whole circle around the island right now, since it's the first time here. Should work great, except for that tree. Yikes. Well, it was good in theory. There we go. I think we've got him back off on the right course here. We've completed the circle around. Minor incident with the tree there. and No big deal. And we're off to the races again. This field is going to get knocked out in no time flat. And then just checking here, it looks like our auto drive driver is getting just a little bit uh, confused trying to catch up with the forage harvester here. Hoping they're going to be able to figure this out, but there is a uh, tree right behind him, so you never know. You never know. Forge Harvester's awaiting impatiently. Auto Drive Driver is going to attempt to make a wide swing. Oh my goodness, we're going down the ravine. That's one way to do it, for sure. However, I got to give him props, figured it out, got right back up here, and is behind the forage harvester. Just enough to let him get started on his row here. Seems to be struggling to move up. Nope, just thinking about it a little bit, deciding which side he wanted to be on. Good deal, good deal. And yeah, they're right back off to the races, so... I mean, all in all, it's a little clunky at times, but it works, which the whole point of this was, I don't want to have to micromanage this uh, the whole time when we're uh, chopping hay every time. So I'm going to be pretty happy to kind of let this uh, run its course and do its thing in the future while the rest of the farm needs a bit of attention. So let me find another tractor here, see if we can unload this other forage box real quick. This is probably the most oversized vehicle we can pick to do this. However, it's got a PTO on it, and it's what we've got available. So we're going to go ahead and grab the 9630 here and just uh, get this other wagon unloading. I think if Auto Drive keeps doing its job and automating the unload process, we're going to be better off having uh, two wagons running on auto drive to keep the forage harvester moving all the time now that we're on the straighter rows. And so I'm just going to get this unloaded. That rake should be done at any point now, and I'll be able to put the 7810 on the other forage box here and have them both running. But I just want to get this unloading while we wait for that. Just checking in here, it looks like the forage harvesting is still going to town. We've got... Uh, everything lining up here, or is the 4440 actually uh, getting full? It's getting pretty close to full, but I think it's trying to find a spot to get into position to top it off, though. And then if I look here, of course, our 7810 is a little bit stuck. So let's go ahead and, and get him unstuck. I think uh, I'm going to have to end up cutting this tree down at some point. It's caused us problems on just about every step of the way. Not just for uh, the 
raking and harvesting here, but we were running into it when we were planting, when we were cutting, all kinds of things. So that one tree there is right on the edge of our field boundaries. I think we're going to end up uh, cutting it off. Now I'm noticing I'm like way off center here as we're making some of these rows. I don't know if the forage harvester is going to have a hard time picking that up or not. Mildly concerning. And, uh, oh my, course play, you are uh, quite aggressively driving down into that ditch. You know, we are uh, not making it up underneath of the course play line, it doesn't look like. But maybe that's just my viewpoint, because it does look like we've uh, got the grass. And, oh, we're clipping that tree again. It looks like it didn't matter, though. We got through it. Cool. Good job. And... We've got the Ford Harvester out there waiting, which means our other driver is attempting to make his run back up here to of the uh, line to unload its hay. Looks like he's waiting patiently in line. Since we're at 5% left, I'm just going to let this finish emptying out. And we'll go ahead and drive this out of the way. There we go. Let's see if that 4440 figures it out and it gets unloaded here. I'm going to go ahead and bring this back out in the field. We'll park it uh, down there in front of our equipment storage shed there so that we can grab it with the 7810 once the raking is finished. Somewhere over here ought to be good and out of the way. In fact, I'll put it all the way over into the grass area. And then we'll run this 9630 right up here into the shed. I don't think we're going to need it again right now. Might as well keep all the equipment in the appropriate sheds, get it all out of the way. There we go. We're starting to get quite the collection of equipment here in our sheds. And nice to see the equipment growing and just checking back in on the rake here it looks like we've got one final round left to do here a little bit of uh, scraggly bits on the side of the hill hopefully it's able to handle it. it sounds like it's pulling a little hard up this hill that was one of the reasons i tossed the 7810 on it instead of the 4440 just to make sure that we had the horsepower to be going up and down these hills with the, the rake. Not that the rake requires a whole lot of oomph to get going, but a little more is always worth it. And yeah, like I said, this is going to knock out the last of the raking here once we make this round. And it's got the added bonus of cleaning up a little bit of the parts we missed on that outside or inside, I should say, uh, uh, headland row. That's all right. We're looking good here, and the end is in sight. I'm excited. I'm trying to think if I need to drop the duels off of this before putting it on the forage box. I might get a little too close to the forage harvester if I leave the duels on. I think I would normally toss them off for a forage box like that, but I'm kind of lazy, so I think we might just uh, try and leave them on and see how it works. So let's go ahead and, and kill off the course play course since we're not using it anymore. And I'm going to drive this right on up here to grab the other forage box. Looks like the 4440 did manage to go out there and unload and come back. So this is awesome. We have indeed completed a full automation of our... Uh, hay production here uh, with minor inconveniences as we get stuck on trees and stuff but I think if I take out a couple of these trees clean up my field boundaries a little bit we can really get this uh, moving and I'm thinking about the field across the river on the other side of the house there that one's going to be a lot easier to run automation on because it's a big straighter field with a lot less obstacles in it so I feel great about our hay production here, especially since we're going to have to run uh, our chopping here multiple times per season. Got to keep cutting that hay. So let's see if I can set this guy up the same way as we have the other one, which should be the farm hay field as the drive to point, the harvest store as the dump point, and tell him to go. 
my assumption is he's going to come out here in the field and sit at this point and wait until he is needed. Hopefully he's not going to be in the way here since we've already taken off the headland passes. Looks like our original uh, forage box driver here is trying to get into position to keep the combine moving here now that he's turned on the endro. There we go. We're looking good. And as I had hoped, it looks like we're doing a lot better job of picking things up on the straight rows than we were doing on the ends of the field. Yeah, we've missed a lot of little bits and pieces around the field here, unfortunately. A function of probably both the rake driver and uh, the automation just being a little bit weird. But all in all, I think I'm happy with this. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can knock out the rest of this field here real quick. And I might even... I'm tempted to just undo the automated drivers because I think I could do it a little bit more efficiently when I'm here. And then just use the automation to send them on their way back to the harvest store. I'm not sure. Like here, I'm not sure why we're backing up. We've had an unfortunate incident with one of the uh, two forge boxes here. It looks like we're running a bit of a uh, broken uh, axle rod here or something. So we're going to go ahead and just see if we can get this thing unloaded here real quick. And then we'll take it up to the shop and see what we can do to get that repaired. Happens uh, more often than I'd care to admit with uh, this particular mod. All, all of these uh, front steering wagons seem to have some kind of issue like this uh, in my experience. It's been a problem since FS19, so, uh, well, we'll just uh, get it unloaded and then we will uh, try and reset it, see what happens here. In the meantime, though, it looks like our forage harvester's going. We've got the 7810 out here uh, doing a quick turnaround maneuver to keep it unloaded. We're making great progress here on this field, actually. We're probably, what, halfway done, if you count the headlands, with all of the hay that we've got to pick up out here. So I suspect we'll be able to get this in just a few more wagon loads. And this has been going so well, the cart is completely full here, right before our other one is even emptied. We're only at 26% here on emptying the other one, so we're running behind. Even with uh, two wagons going, it's just uh, hard to keep up, which is great. It means we're being efficient here, even at a farm right next to uh, the house here. We're not able to keep up with the chopper. Oh, that's uh, good news for us. We may at some point have to actually invest in something bigger than these forage boxes. I might have to get, I don't know, like a, a semi-trailer or something to pull behind uh, the semi and see if we could keep up a little bit better with a higher volume container. I know there's some bigger uh, forage boxes as well we could get, so we might have to look into all that. But there we go. We've got it all emptied out here. Let's see if I can come in here and if I do a repair. Uh, that doesn't seem to do it. Well, let me go ahead and disconnect it real quick and then uh, we'll see if I can reset it. Turn everything else off for just a second. There it is. Reset. And we'll go ahead and drive back over here to where I know we've got our uh, reset point set up to at the moment. Should be right there. Well, there we go. And I'm just noticing I'm out of money. What did I just do to use up what money we had? I know I repaired this thing, but that shouldn't have cost that much. Hmm, let's go take a look. Uh, probably vehicle leasing costs. I probably just ticked a over for a vehicle leasing cost. It looks like we're paying a bunch of money for water every tick. Um, that's got to be the cows automatically deducting that money. And I'm not sure what the miscellaneous payment is here. That's usually our land payment, so... We should be good to go. Well, as long as we've got the other one unloading here, we can just drive this back out to the field manually. Anywhere out into the field is good enough. And then we just hit uh, go, and it should figure out where the combine is and pick up like nothing happened. 
Meanwhile, uh, this one should actually finish unloading and get back out to the field along before uh, we are full on the other one just because it took us so much time to get everything sorted out and get the wagon back out in the field and operational. So we're all good to go here. We've got uh, we got some more chopping to do. We're going to finish this job up, I think, off camera today. Normally, I'd uh, try and time lapse or do some uh, montage or something here. However, uh, unfortunately, and you've probably noticed in today's video, I'm in pretty rough shape. I've uh, been fighting off a, a sinus infection for a few weeks here, and I'm just uh, a bit under the weather. So we're going to keep this one short today. And we'll be back in a couple of days here on Wednesday with a, a new episode where we'll uh, get into some more uh, summertime fun here on the farm. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. If you have, hit that like button because I'm going to need all the positive vibes I can get to uh, cope with all of the equipment that I'm fishing out of ditches and stuff, trying to get automation running a little bit better here on the farm. That's all for today. Kedrick out. <laughs> oh, that'll be in the bloopers. Oh, it looks like the rake might have another little bit of an accident there. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Well, a while, whoa.